You turn it on and it's there for you. Safe, clean, drinkable water. It's something we take for granted most of the time. Have you ever wondered where Durango's drinking water comes from? Most of what comes out of your faucets begins its long journey in the Weminuch Wilderness, northeast of Durango. Snowpack, rain, and groundwater form the Florida River, which flows south through Lemon Reservoir and toward Durango. Durango has senior water rights that allow us to divert a maximum of 5.7 million gallons of water per day from the Florida. That may sound like a lot, but we use more than that every day during the summer. When that happens, we can get the extra water we need by pumping from the Animus River just north of the Whitewater Park. The water from the Florida River is fed by gravity into a pipeline that travels nine miles to the reservoir at the water treatment plant, located northeast of the Hillcrest Golf Course on the College Mesa. The water pumped from the Animus also comes into this reservoir. It can hold up to 91 million gallons, enough to supply the city for about 14 days in the summer. Drinking the water right out of the rivers is unsafe. There's bacteria, viruses, and other contaminants that can make you sick. That's why we treat it here at the water treatment plant. Residence time, or the time the water spends in the reservoir, allows large particles of dirt, debris, and organic material to settle to the bottom before it enters the plant. The reservoir water flows by gravity through large pipes into the plant, where it starts its journey through five processes to make it safe for you to drink. These processes are coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. The first process in the water treatment plant is coagulation, where we add a coagulant chemical right here to the flash mixer, and it happens in a few seconds. The raw, untreated water has negatively charged, suspended particles that repel each other and are too light to settle out by themselves. Coagulant is a chemical that introduces positive charges to the water, allowing the particles to attract to each other, kind of like magnets. Water moves to the next process, flocculation, where we add a second chemical called a flocculant. This acts like a heavy glue, sticking tiny particles together and forming what is called flock. The water is slowly and gently stirred by large mixers, allowing flock to become larger and heavier as the water moves through the basin. The next process is sedimentation, which happens in this large basin behind me. The water flows through this basin very slowly. Using only time and gravity, the large, heavy flock settles to the bottom. The now clarified water exits the sedimentation basin through these tubes and troughs. It looks really clean, but we still have two more processes to go. Filtration is the fourth step in our water treatment process. Our plant has eight large filters. In the filters, there's two feet of anthracite, or crushed coal, and underneath that is one foot of sand. That clean looking water entering these filters still has harmful bacteria and viruses in it that could make us sick. But as the water is pushed through these filters by gravity, the anthracite and sand trap any unsettled flock or harmful organisms by using adsorption. This means the unsettled material in the water sticks to the outside, jagged edges of the anthracite and sand. These filters become very dirty with all the trap material, so each filter must be washed every three days. Our fifth and final step is disinfection. All public water systems in Colorado are required to disinfect their treated water before it's considered safe to drink. Disinfection means we kill any bacteria or viruses that may be present after the filters. It happens in this building. We produce disinfectant on site using these generators or we use chlorine tablets which disinfect the drinking water. We also add a small amount of fluoride to help prevent cavities and protect oral health in our community. Both the Florida and the Animus River have naturally occurring fluoride in them. So we add just enough to reach levels for optimum oral health. Durango's water quality, water treatment processes, and chemical doses are consistently monitored by water treatment plant operators to ensure we are delivering safe, high quality drinking water. Finally, the treated water flows through our clear well to our 7.2 million gallon storage tank. And from there enters Durango's 150 miles of pipeline and eventually leads to your faucet. 
Durango's water service extends just north of the Red Cliff Apartments, west to Twin Butte Subdivision, south to Animus Air Park, and east to Three Springs and Mercy Hospital. There are 12 water storage tanks around the city to help store water for homes, fire protection, and to help maintain water pressure. Our water treatment plant was built in 1956 and has been online ever since, with many upgrades over the years. It produces up to 14 million gallons of water per day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year without ever closing, except for short periods for maintenance. As the city grows, we plan to treat water from Lake Nighthorse to supplement flows from the Florida and Animus Rivers. Here are some numbers to think about. In the winter, our water plant treats and sends to customers two and a half million gallons of water a day. Most of that, up to two million gallons, ultimately ends up at the wastewater treatment plant from showers, sinks, dishwashers, laundry, and other uses. There it is treated again and returned to the Animus River. In the summer, the water plant treats and sends to customers more than seven million gallons of water a day. That's as much as our biggest tank holds. Yet still only about two million gallons a day ends up at the wastewater plant. So where does that extra five million gallons of water go? It's mostly used to water our lawns and gardens, to wash our cars and so forth. What can you do to help save water? It's really easy. Remember your three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Some helpful tips are to turn off the faucet when you brush your teeth, take shorter showers, water your grass and gardens early in the day or in the evening, never during the heat of the day. Use water-saving appliances and devices. There are lots of ways to help conserve our most precious resource. If we all do our part, we'll be sure to have enough water for now and into the future.